You are watching the Mapping Evaluation video podcast series produced by the National Sexual Violence Resource Center. The NSVRC serves as the nation's principal information and resource center regarding all aspects of sexual violence. In this podcast, we talk with Jen Shavosnik, Director of Prevention and Evaluation with the North Carolina Coalition Against Sexual Assault, about incorporating evaluation approaches into sexual violence prevention work. When we're talking about providing kind of training and technical assistance to people on programs who don't have evaluation experience and for whom that term can feel really scary um, and really um, intellectualized and academic, um, I think it's important to talk about kind of the value of data driven decision making for program improvement so that, you know, everybody wants to have the strongest programs that they possibly can. Nobody wants to be wasting money. Everybody wants to be doing the best work they can in their community. And so evaluation can, get, can be a tool to help you do that, to help you make those data-driven decisions so you know whether the work that you're doing is actually impacting the community and hence chipping away at ending sexual violence, which is what we're hoping to do. It plays out in a number of ways. So. Um, the local um, RPE funded programs are all required to evaluate every level of their work, which is true for, you know, I think um, most if not all states that are doing, um, that are providing technical assistance to their RPE programs really closely. Um, but I don't want to say what's different about me because I know a lot of preventionists are doing fantastic work um, in their states. Um, what I try to do is make sure that um, I'm talking about evaluation in accessible ways that um, enable people to really grasp the importance of it outside of this is something I need to do because it's a funding mandate, which um, is something that my grantees still might feel, which is completely appropriate and fine um, because not everyone loves evaluation. But I, I do hope, I guess, to bring people closer to it by helping folks really understand the kind of um, technicalities of measurement. And when I say that, it sounds really loaded, but really I, I want folks to understand that kind of, I really feel like folks need to understand measurement theory and design before you can really do evaluation and have an appreciation for evaluation. So something as simple as why do we ask the questions that we ask? When do we ask them? When is it not appropriate to ask them? Um, how can, how can we really utilize our skills and knowledge on the ground to craft the best possible questions for our populations? Um, which is, I think, a place where um, folks can get really jazzed and excited, right? Where they're really able to kind of get their hands dirty in the evaluation and they're not implementing something that feels really foreign to them. So really, um, I think kind of backing up and being able to talk about the mechanics of measurement why that's important, um, and how you can really kind of play a, a huge role in that um, is what I'm trying to do in my state. I, uh, I, after many years of realizing that I was kind of not doing that and feeling like I needed to do something a little different, I decided to implement a full day kind of measurement 101 um, with the RPE grantees, and that was really successful. Um, and I realized after that 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 really changed the way I thought about evaluation, training, and technical assistance across North Carolina. So I'm hoping to do more of that with non-RPE grantees. I think that might that will clearly need to look a little different because the capacity level is different. But I'm hoping that if I do that and kind of demystify, if you will, evaluation, then that will help it be more accessible for folks. Um, I'm I don't know, <laughs> but. I, um, I have a sense of, of what that looks like. Um, so I think one of the things that I think at baseline needs to happen, um, and certainly um, all organizations are imperfect and, and we don't even do this to the level that um, we're, we're moving toward um, at NCCASA, but I think that we, we need to always as a staff be aware of how programs are being evaluated um, and share those evaluation results with everyone um, at that agency. So I, I think that at baseline, if we're doing that, then that starts to create um, a culture 
um, where evaluation is an inevitable and an important and integral part of, of all of the programmatic activities happening at the agency. Um, I also think, and this is just requires a lot more capacity and a, a lot more time that folks don't have, but I also think um, that uh, if it's possible for kind of um, uh, kind of uh, cross training to occur across programs so that programs are working together to create evaluation tools and not only evaluation tools for for each other's programs but really kind of you know if, if we could say meta evaluation tools for the for the agency itself right so so how are we measuring the work that we're doing um, are we measuring the work that we're doing how are we measuring that um, and or what are we doing with those results? So again, back to kind of data-driven decision-making on an agency level, are we, are we doing that um, and are we using those results to kind of make the, pro, the, um, the agency level changes that, and modifications that might need to be made to be doing the best possible work in our state? Make sure that the folks you're working with understand why they're evaluating, that it's not just something to do because it's a requirement of the grant. And, and most preventionists already are doing this. So, um, But talk about data-driven decision-making. Talk about how fantastic it is to be able to look at the results of your program and then make decisions about your program based on those results and being able to kind of really get your hands dirty in that and do that yourself, how wonderful that, that is. I would also say, and I, um, I should have mentioned this earlier, that I also think it's really important to make sure that you're getting communities involved in, in that evaluation. So even if you're not able to quite literally do um, you know, uh, get your community involved in participatory action research or something like that. I know that we don't, we all don't have the capacity to do that necessarily. Um, clearly, it's a great model, and I would recommend it. But if even if you're not capable of that, then even just getting community level task forces involved in looking at evaluation results and starting to kind of postulate together, well, what does this mean, um, and how can we use this to modify? what's happening in between the evaluation pre and the evaluation post. You know, how can we use those results to modify what we're doing on the ground? I think is incredibly important because that obviously um, is going to be an, an integral part of community buy-in. So really getting your community involved in your evaluation at whatever level is possible for you at any given moment, I think is um, incredibly valuable. For more information on the NSVRC, please go to www.nsvrc.org or call toll-free at 877-739-3895. The NSVRC was founded by the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Rape and is funded in large part by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention.